Hey guys, how's it going? So we're continuing on our 2017 paper. Okay, so this, these are Brian's papers. Uh, subscriber Brian, you said uh, uh, you wanted questions 22, 23, and 24, and then you couldn't find them. And then you just put it uh, in the comment section, and then we just start uh, picked up on that. And then now we're following through on what we started. Okay, so question 23 says, the farmer is a plot which measures 150 meters by 140 meters. The farmer wants to use chemicals to destroy the weeds uh, in, the, in, the in the plot. Okay, so for, for every uh, 100 square meters, he actually needs uh, 5 liters of chemicals. So he asked to calculate the quantity of chemicals uh, in liters needed to destroy the weeds for the whole plot. So this one is it's called uh, direct, direct um, uh, variation. Okay, so you have uh, this area. As you increase the area, you actually have to increase the, the number of liters for the chemicals used. Okay, so uh, here, in order for you to calculate the quantity of chemicals used, you actually have to calculate the area first. So the area would be equal to uh, the length, which is uh, 150 meters, to multiply by the, by the width, which is 140 meters, like this, okay? So just do directly 150, multiply by 140. So I'm going to multiply here. And then I just get uh, here, it's uh, 0, 5, then 1. Then here I'm going to put this one, and then this one is 0. Then here it's uh, 20, so 0. Then you carry two sets of uh, 10. Then here we get 4 plus 2, then you get 6, okay? So then we just add, we get um, this one 11, so 1k1, we get uh, 20, 21,000, okay? So, okay, so after getting 21,000, you actually have to use a, a simple proportion. So here you have uh, 100 square meters is to, is to 5 liters. If you want, you can just write uh, liters here, it's still fine, okay? And then you want to know what uh, 21,000 uh, square meters would equal. So we had say this is direct proportion. So as uh, one quantity increases, also the other must increase. So we're dealing with a case of more here. So if it's more, bigger number at the top. So we're looking at 21,000 square meters divided by 100 square meters multiplied by five liters here, okay? So here you can actually just cancel straight up uh, these. And then you just have uh, 210 multiplied by five. 210 divided by two you get uh, one, 105, okay. So 105, then you just add a zero here, and then you have your number. If uh, this confuses you, just uh, simply do simple multiplication as you would do. But essentially, if you are multiplying by five, you can just uh, divide by two first, and then you multiply by 10. So multiplying by 10 simply means adding a zero here. So this is, this is, this is the amount of uh, liters that would be required uh, for, the, for, the, for the plot, okay. So that's, that's just about it. Uh, let's see if we can uh, answer the, the B part. The B part says five liters of chemicals cost this much. Find the cost of the chemicals needed to destroy the whole plot. So again, we're using a simple proportion. So five liters cost how much? Eight dollars. So you want to know the cost of 10, 50 liters. Okay, so you want to know the cost of um, 1,050 liters a year. Would obviously be more just because the money and the uh, quantity required they're directly proportional you increase one then the other one actually increases as well so you have this one liters over five liters multiplied by eight dollars like this so you'd be having five into five you can just cancel those ones obviously so you get uh two here then here you get one then here you get uh zero so you have 210 multiplied by eight so you have 80 at the end Okay, so for this one year, then here you have 16. So it's 1,680 like this, okay. So this is the, the amount which should be required to you to destroy the whole, uh, to the whole, the whole weeds for, for the whole plot, okay. So the, all the weeds for the, for the whole plot. So this is just about it. I think we still have time, okay. So we're actually going to hop on to the uh, question 24. We have this diagram and uh, you have shown that uh, the uh, this one intersects the x-axis at C, okay, here, and the y-axis at B, exactly as you're seeing it. And uh, also the line is parallel to line uh, L here, okay, so it's parallel to this line, and it also passes through zero, uh, which which passes which passes through zero, then minus two, like this, okay. So at this point here, so you asked to find the coordinates of of B. So the coordinates of B here would be at B. So you can say at B. So here, item one. 
at b here x is equal to zero okay so because we are in on the y axis so x equals zero so your x if when x equal to zero then you can just simply substitute to say 5y equal to 2x plus 15 here so 5y equal to 2 then you substitute 0 plus 15 here then you get 5y equal to 15 then y equal to 3 obviously uh at this point you can just stop cancelling stuff okay so it's still fine especially if you're getting these answers right so that uh, the person will be marking a paper that can just know uh, from your working that you know you, at this point they you're actually just divided by five if you want you can also just show that working it's still fine okay so therefore b is what is the x ordinate is zero then the y ordinate is what is three so like this so this one is b then uh item two you're asked to find the gradient of line l so you're told that uh, the gradients are the same so for this line, this line they are parallel so the gradients are the same so you can say from uh, 5y equal to 2x plus 15 then you have y equal to then you say 2 over 5 here we are dividing everything by by 5 okay so 15 over 3 here so uh comparing to y equal to mx plus c uh, gradient m equal to 2 over over 5 okay so gradient of l is the same is the gradient of 5y equal to 2x plus 15 like this okay so the gradients are the same so you just had to find the gradient of of this line here so you could uh, just do it by by changing the subject if you arrange uh, your equation such that you have you make y the subject of the formula the coefficient of x here would be the would be the gradient okay and uh, you asked to write uh, the line l in the form uh, y equal to mx plus c so already you know the gradient gradient is equal to 2 over 5 okay so you can say m equal to 2 over over 5 so you have y equal to 2 over 5x plus plus c here so now you just need to, to find c so you say using point so you can use any point on the line here we have this point here so this point you can use so it's 0 minus 2 here so you can just say uh, on y we're going to put negative 2 on x we are going to put uh, a zero k okay. so here this one it's, it was actually did give away c was actually just uh, uh negative two here because uh, it's it's actually c is actually the y intercept so it's just the uh, y the y ordinate for for the for way the way the uh, graph crosses this okay so you therefore y equal to 205 x plus plus what plus uh negative two okay so plus negative two simply means minus two. It would still be the, the same thing, okay? So here uh, you could have just said by inspection c equal to equal to the y ordinate here, uh, which is um uh, negative two, and then the gradient we had uh, calculated it already. So I think uh, we can still have time for the last question, okay? So that we don't have too many videos. Here it says the diagram you have these triangles, and then they're said to be congruent. So congruent simply means they are identical in terms of the uh, dimensions and also in terms of the of the angles. Okay, so uh, if you're asked to describe the uh, the transformation from triangle A to B, you just observe. So this one is triangle A. This one is triangle B. Uh, there is a way uh, in which you can uh, figure out like what uh, transformation you're talking about. The first clue for me here is that you're told that this is a congruent transformation. So if it's a congruent transformation, you can think of um, uh, it in several ways. So it can be reflection. Okay, these are congruent transformations. It can be rotation or it can be translation. Okay, so these ones you expect it to know them. And if it's reflection, it's as if the shape is looking onto itself. Okay, the two shapes are looking onto each other which is this case that we actually find here okay so uh this is definitely reflection so but then 
uh, if you are describing a reflection you have to describe it fully so to describe fully a reflection you need the line of reflection okay so what i'm going to do here is to you should uh, just join any two corresponding points that's what you do and this one would be your paper so you'd be able to uh, do this nicer than i'm doing it so afterwards you have to bisect this okay so you actually have to bisect this so bisect simply means um, uh, to cut it into two and then see where it where it, uh, where it falls so here i can see that uh, from here you get to from negative two then to two and then to to this part here so it's as if i i am i'm, I'm whipping over um, i'm actually like spanning over one box and then just two and a half up to the spawn point here okay so that, that's that's what's happening and um so that's what i'm gonna do but then for you you can actually just straight up bisect the line okay so here i'm going to go on to uh two and two and a half so somewhere here uh because i'm thinking i'm thinking that's the that's where the the line is so here you can actually just straight up use uh dotted lines just like uh like these okay so this line here was the equation for this line so this one is uh half up to up to the up to the fifth box so obviously this one is a uh, zero point um point uh, this, this one is one up to the fifth box so obviously this one is 0 0.5 so this one is line what it's line x equal to 0 0.5 okay so you can just say this one it's a it's a reflection in the line x equal to 0 0.5 so just to recap again what you do is we have to join any two corresponding sides any sides would do and then you have to bisect them the line uh, that, that, that you get there from from the bisection is actually the line of uh, of our reflection okay and then here you ask do you find the triangle b of uh, the uh, transformation uh for b onto c so b here onto onto c here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete everything and then we're going to because this one it's a it's a bit delicate uh, from from B to C, it's as if like they are rotating. It can't be a translation because the, the the B and C triangles they're not facing uh, the same direction. It can't be a reflection because um uh, you don't see uh any line of reflection here. It's not as if these ones they are looking uh they are mere images of each other. Okay, so it has to be rotation. But then how do you find the center? Because the rotation you have to describe. Fully. so that means the center of rotation the angle of rotation and then also just saying that it's, it's rotation okay so the way that you do it is um you have to find any two corresponding sides so two corresponding sides i'm thinking this one here is corresponding to uh this other one here so you can just actually go there and then actually go here as well so i'm gonna adjust like this and then i'm gonna adjust some more like this and then like this okay so here i'm going to join this two okay so i'm actually going to join solid solid line is still fine and then after joining this two you have to bisect the two okay so you have to bisect so let's see So you have to, to bisect this line. So I'm going to bisect this line like this. Okay. So it's not very perfect, but uh, it's something. Since I don't have uh, the instruments here. Okay. So uh, after bisecting uh, this line here, you are you have to do it for the same for for any two corresponding sides. Okay. So this one is as if it's uh, going clockwise. So this one should be joining with this one. Okay. So I'm going to go for these two here okay so just simply join them this one won't be perfect because i'm not using uh perfect instruments okay so i'm actually trying to gauge here uh where i'll be i'll be bisecting so this one spins over from negative two then you have zero then you have two then you have um uh and then and a half here so i'm thinking it uh the the intersection would be 
where exactly the intersection will be somewhere here okay the 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 perpendicular will be somewhere here okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bisect again and then after bisecting there is this part where these two meet okay so this one is called the center of rotation so here it can be rotation center so this one is separate description center would be zero zero then you need the angle of rotation so to you know to get the the angle of rotation you can use uh, any two corresponding sides so let's use these ones so let's say it's going here and it's starting from from here so like this and then it's here then we're going to also join this one right here okay so this one right here great and now what we have to know is this angle right here of which this angle right here it's 90 degrees so you can actually just straight up go ahead and say 90 degrees anti-clockwise because it's uh it's uh b on to c so this one it's rotated in this direction by 90 degrees you can say two centered degrees clockwise or this one anti-clockwise okay anti-clockwise and that's it for this question okay so it could have been better we are actually planning to uh, find some ways to actually do this in a way that illustrates better but then essentially that's that's it you have to join any two corresponding uh, vertices and you have to uh, bisect them and uh, where they meet that's where the center of rotation is then you just gauge for any two corresponding sides or any co two corresponding vertices are they the angle of, of rotation okay that's just about it uh thanks so much for watching make sure you like share and subscribe i'll catch you in later videos you out